Jens Althoff, who is the director of the Paris Bureau of the Heinrich Boll Foundation. Uh, thank you so much for, for speaking to us. Just for the benefit of our viewers, your foundation is a German political foundation affiliated with the German Green Party. Uh, let me start, therefore, by asking for your reaction to the outcome of France's municipal elections, which have been nothing short of triumphant for uh, Green Party uh, supporters and their allies. Yeah, good afternoon. And I think this was a historical moment yesterday in the evening. And with such a lot of so important victories of these really important cities, I think it was a big surprise that the Greens could win so clearly. And it shows, and it was not clear, because of course, it's normal after this terrible pandemic, and it's not over, but the confinement and all with what linked with it, that of course the occupation of a lot of people were also different and a lot of people didn't went out to vote. But it seems that especially people really interested in questions of ecology, they were mobilized and they went out voting. And it's also interesting to see that uh, this was really an ecological policy project with a strong social dimension won yesterday evening because you not only had all these victories of the Greens, you also had a lot of victories from uh, socialist mayors like Anne Hidalgo in Paris, but also with an ecological project, really, which was in the heart of the program. So do you think, in fact, that the environment is now perhaps the single overriding issue on voters' minds, or, or do you think that's going a, a step too far? I think it seems that the awareness for questions of public and personal health were reinforced with this pandemic. And also it showed, in a way, the vulnerability of our way of production, consumption, and our general way of living. And this has become really evident with the pandemic. And this is also linked, I think, that there is now more awareness for such questions, perhaps even more than it was before. And it also shows, on the other side, that this and an ecological policy with always a strong social dimension is a very clear political project. And it seems that it's not only in France, it's also in Germany, that now Greens are getting the leading political force on the left with this very clear political project. OK, I was, you, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was about to ask you whether you were seeing similar patterns emerging in Europe. Uh, so to go a little further on that point, are, are we seeing any kind of pan-European approach at a political level towards environmental issues? I would say this is a bit going too far because you must say, nevertheless, it's something you can now see in Western Europe and in the north of Europe. You can't see it in the same way in the south and in the eastern part of Europe. So it's really a phenomenon there. But yeah, there it is. It is in Germany. It is in France. You also now have the Greens and the government at the government in Ireland since the last weekend. You have them in Austria, in Finland, in Luxembourg, in Sweden in the governments. You have them in 11 regions states in Germany, they're also in the government, they're even leading a government in Baden-Württemberg. Yeah, it seems that this is really one of the main political projects at the moment. And if you look to, for example, Emmanuel Macron, this is very interesting because it seems that there is no political project left after all what he had as problems in the last years and also now after the pandemic. So he also now tries to take over this political project in a way. But OK, we will see, because at the moment, these are only declarations he did uh, this morning. But it's nevertheless interesting that this is one of the main political projects and a lot of different political forces trying to go around this project. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been pretty uh, vocal on environmental issues since the beginning of his uh, his presidency uh, in his defense. But just lastly, I mean, let's talk about any obstacles out there towards a sort of more environmentally friendly set of political beliefs. I mean, what, what are the obstacles, would you say? Is it lobbies or is it perhaps still a reluctance on the part of citizens, uh, people like you and me, to change our way of life? I don't see really the citizens as problem because you, you saw what the votes were for and what they voted for. And it's also, and this is very interesting if you see it at a city level, because really voting for an ecological project with a social dimension means voting for more quality in life. That's the whole idea. I mean, protecting climate, protecting environment is having more quality in life. And the people are directly touched in cities 
by pollution, by noise, by the fact that it's getting hotter and hotter there. So it's really having also more quality in life and also just keeping quality in life. But you're right, there are a lot of problems because now we have this EU recovery plan, we have the European Green Deal, we have a moment or you have recovery plans in France and Germany and other countries. And if you look there in the details of these recovery plans, they are not really green at the moment. So we have now a decisive moment because of this big economical crisis we have now, we will even have more in the next month. We only have all this money to spend on the US to invest only one time. And this is a decisive moment. Will this money really go to invest in a sort of carbon neutral future and a sort of sustainable future with also sustainable jobs? Or will it more be there just to maintain all a lot of old structures? And these old structures, we're talking about it, of course, they have also a lot of money of possibilities and very powerful lobbies. So we will see in the next month what will be a sort of nice declaration, so perhaps a greenwashing, and what will be a real policy going to an ecological and social transition.